Joe Whedon's involved, you can always expect an amazing ensemble piece. Where's my clips? Ah! Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Joss Whedon characters. In each generation, a slayer is born. One girl in all the world, a chosen one, one born with a strength, strength and skill to hunt the power. vampires. For this list, we're taking a look at characters that Joss Whedon played a hand in creating and forming, so fully established characters like the Avengers don't count. And I'm a huge fan of the way you lose control and turn into an enormous green rage monster. But both big screen and small screen characters will be considered. Oh, come on! <laughs> Number 10, Cordelia Chase, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Angel. What's your name? I'm Cordelia Chase, dumbass. In the beginning, Cordelia is depicted as a typical spoiled rich girl who is generally annoyed by Buffy's Scooby gang. You're not hanging with these losers, are you? Uh, are you kidding? <laughs> I was just being charitable. Like the best Whedon characters though, there turns out to be more to this valley girl than meets the eye. Oh, I would kill to live in LA, that close to that many shoes. <laughs> as much as we love bratty Cordelia, we're even bigger fans of the strong human being she evolves into over time. You don't know who he is, do you? Oh boy, you're about to get your ass kicked. She truly comes into her own upon joining Team Angel, acting as a wonderful comedic foil, dedicated emotional support, and an unlikely heroine willing to make great sacrifices. Oh, what the hell? Went for the road? Number 9. Willow Rosenberg, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Hi. Willow, right? Why? I, I mean, hi. Uh, did you want me to move? Yet another character that undergoes significant changes, Willow starts off as a shy, insecure nerd. Through Buffy's friendship though, Willow discovers that she's smarter, braver, and more powerful than she ever imagined. You're strong, like an Amazon, remember? <laughs> I do. In exchange, Willow acts as the nurturing mother figure of the Scooby gang who always has a plan. But this isn't right. Okay, this isn't how I want it. Sometimes you don't have a choice. Willow also stands out as one of television's first gay characters, not to be defined by her sexuality, maintaining a healthy romantic relationship that's universally relatable regardless of gender. Just don't piss her off because she has an unforgiving dark side. I... Love you. Shut up! Number 8, Jane Cobb, Firefly, Serenity. Your own room, full one of the kitchen, whole shot. Jane, I ain't asking. Ah, ah. Shut up. At first glance, a lot of Whedon's characters come off as one note archetypes. In Jane's case, he seems like a gruff mercenary. What happened in here? Need to find some tape. So you had to tear my infirmary apart? Apparently. Behind that tough guy appearance, however, Jane is a loyal member of Serenity that's genuinely sympathetic towards those he cares about. He demonstrates this through subtle actions, such as sporting a dorky cap that his mother made him. Man walks down the street in that hat, people know he's not afraid of anything. Damn straight. While not always the easiest person to get along with, Jane will gladly accompany his crewmates on a suicide mission and even crack a good joke in the process. Situation is always fluid. Only fluid I see here is a puddle of piss refusing to pay us our wage. Number seven, Hoban Wash Washburn, Firefly, Serenity. Wash. I'm not leaving her side, Mal. Don't ask me again. Browncoats can't help but break out into tears whenever somebody says, I am a leaf on the wind. I am a leaf on the wind. Watch how I soar. Don't ask why. Wash is a crucial member of his crew, and not merely because he's Serenity's pilot. I'm not flying anywhere without my wife. He's not the most daring hero, as he's often emasculated by his wife. But Wash is a devoted friend and husband nevertheless, willing to travel to the vastest reaches of the universe for them. Is there any way I'm going to get out of this with honor and dignity? You're pretty much down to ritual suicide, Lammy Toes. His casual attitude also provides the ship with a refreshingly laid-back, playful atmosphere. How many captains do you know that collect toy dinosaurs? I think we should call it your grave. Ah, curse your sudden but inevitable betrayal. Ah, ah, ah. Number six, Anya Jenkins, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I wish Buffy Summers had never come to Sunnydale. 
done. Among Buffy's Scooby gang, Anna evidently has the weakest social skills and sense of empathy. Well, hold on, I'm gonna press the right pedal harder. I expect us to accelerate. She's never afraid to say exactly what's on her mind, no matter how insensitive. Of course, what do you expect from somebody that used to be a vengeance demon? Do you have any idea how boring 12th graders are? I'm getting my power center back. And if you won't help me, then by the pestilent gods, I will find someone who will. Her unfiltered mouth makes her a terrific source of comedic relief, but Anya also becomes progressively more thoughtful as she discovers what it means to be human. Okay, no sex. Cuddling? It's just I'm so excited and I want to share it all with my best friend. I get to be with my best friend forever. By the end, she's willing to face any unspeakable evil to preserve the fate of mankind. Except maybe bunnies. They got them hopping legs and twitching little noses and what's with all the carrots. Number 5. Dr. Horrible. Dr. Horrible sing-along blog. Uh, 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 uh. So that's, you know, coming along. I'm working with a vocal coach. Strengthening the... Uh. Although TV owners had to endure months without original content during the 2007-2008 Writers Guild of America strike, Joss Whedon fortunately had them covered with Dr. Horrible's sing-along blog. It's Dr. Horrible's turn. You people all have to learn. This world is going to burn. The title character of this inexpensive musical is the most awkward, insecure, and nonchalantly evil villain you'll ever find online. I'm not a henchman. I'm Dr. Horrible. I've got a PhD in horribleness. Dr. Horrible juggles committing heinous deeds with battling his nemesis, Captain Hammer. Captain Hammer's here, hair blowing in the breeze. The day needs my saving expertise. Working up the courage to talk to his crush, Penny. I know you. Hello. You know me. Cool. I mean, yeah, you do. And maintaining a video blog. And he does all of the above with wit, sympathy, and of course, fabulous singing chops. It's a brand new day, yeah the sun is high, all the angels sing because you're gonna die. Number 4, Angel, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Angel. Breathman? <laughs> Angel is one of the most courageous heroes and most ruthless villains ever to walk the earth. No weapons, no friends, no hope. Formerly known as Angelus, this once merciless vampire suffers a severe identity crisis upon gaining a soul. Eventually, Angel dedicates his eternal life to fighting evil alongside Buffy, who brings out the best and worst in him. If you are hanging around, I'd like to know why. Maybe I like you. Angel's charm, charisma, and sense of humor shine through his brooding exterior, making him everything Edward Cullen should have been. Chocolate? All right, all right, we need to focus here, try and figure it out. I love chocolate. Speaking of which, kind of ironic he would later go by the alias of Twilight. You're looking at the wee little puppet man. <laughs> Number three, Buffy Summers, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I'm up, Mom. Don't want to be late for your first day. Sure, she already existed in film before Joss reimagined her for television, but the characters barely resemble each other aside from the opening premise. You're always around when all this weird stuff is happening, and I know you're very strong, and you've got all those weapons. I was kind of hoping you were in a gang. Some people may have a hard time taking a blonde teenager that slays vampires seriously. For years, however, Buffy Summers was the most empowering, multi-layered, and entertaining heroine on television. <sighs> Although Buffy possesses unbelievable powers, that's not what makes her compelling. What distinguishes Buffy is her witty persona, commitment to her friends, and knack for leadership. <laughs> Like any great leader, Buffy is only as great as her followers, who all help her to become a stronger slayer and human being. She's truly a timeless character that'll forever kick ass. I will always love you. This is the work that I have to do. Number 2. Malcolm Reynolds. Firefly. Serenity. Our angels are going to soar overhead rain and fire on those arrogant cards, so you hold! You Although Firefly only lasted a season, its characters made an instant connection with audiences as if we'd known them for years. Nowhere is this more evident than with Malcolm Reynolds. Well, looks can be deceiving. 
The captain of Serenity will take on just about any risky job if the price is right, but he still preserves a moral code to keep his band of misfits alive. Should I start with the part where you're stranded in the middle of nowhere, or the part where you have no clothes? All according to plan. Like Captain Kirk or Han Solo, Malcolm's a commanding yet lovable presence that you want to follow into battle. Somebody needs to put you down, dog. What do you think? I'm thinking we'll rise again. Even if the odds aren't in his favor. If I'm wrong, you best shoot me now. Or we could talk more. Before we get to our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Doesn't mean what you think. Everybody know that not yelling at her. There's sure you want nothing to do with that. Put it down. Yeah, I uh, had to dismember that guy with the trowel. What have you been up to? Just do it, that's all. My daddy says I got natural talent. I'm suddenly very up. It's just, um... I've never been up with people before. Number one. Spike, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and Angel. Home sweet home. Spike is an unforgettable character on several levels. Upon arriving in Sunnydale, he's a deliciously malevolent baddie ready to wreak havoc. We cut the power. Nobody got out. And the Slayer? After getting a microchip in his head, though, Spike goes from comedic foil She didn't even care enough to cut off my head to reluctant ally This should be a kick to love interest to noble hero. Oh. See how it ends. His surprisingly depressing backstory only makes him more complex and identifiable. I did, pet. I did it for you. And you keep punishing me. Carrying on with creatures like this. No matter what role Blondie Bear is playing, you can count on him to steal every scene he's in. And to think, Spike was originally supposed to die after just a few episodes. Oh, bollocks. I was just getting warmed up. So, do you agree with our list? Maybe I should do that then. Maybe you should. Okay, good, fine. What's your favorite Joss Whedon character? My parents are gonna think I'm such a burnout. For more entertaining top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com. Now come on. Uh, 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 uh,